All right, let's review um, the other trig functions in 4.4. Um, so we have tangent, which is sine over cosine. Cotangent is the reverse, cosine over sine. And then we have secant and cosecant, where we have the reciprocals of sine and cosine. So these are good to know. Let's box them and do an example. So let's find these all for um, x equals 5 pi over 3. So I'm going to get in the habit of drawing the unit circle every time. Um, that's going to help us learn it and just identify the correct angle. Um, so we have pi over 3 would be right here, right? 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3 would be, oops, more wall. 2 pi over 3. 3 pi over 3 would be the same as pi, right? So 4 pi over 3 would be under here, and so then 5 pi over 3 would be here. And so if you have that unit circle to reference, that's a good thing to reference. 5 pi over 3. So I'm going to draw that um, sine cosine triangle, and then we can find the others um, in relationship to that. So let's see. So we make a triangle. Um, so remember, um, sine is left and right. So, or sorry, cosine is left and right. And it's the short side. And then sine is up and down. And so I like that trick with the short side and the long side. So the short side is one half. Um, and it would be positive because it's left and right. And then the long side is root 3 over 2. And it's negative because we're below the x-axis. So we get 1 half and negative root 3 over 2. And if you have the unit circle, you'll see that as well. So let's see, how can we find tangent? We'll just use all this to find tangent. So tangent of x is sine over cosine. So sine over cosine, negative root 3 over 2 over 1 half. So all of this comes from the unit circle. So hopefully we've been practicing that. Um, and the 2s cancel out, and we get negative root 3. And then cotangent x is the opposite of this, so it's cosine over sine. So it'll be the reverse, 1 half over negative root 3 over 2. So again, those 2s cancel out. And I get 1 over negative root 3, which works. Um, often we'll rationalize this. So root 3, root 3, which gives me negative root 3. And then those turn into just a 3 without the square root. So anytime you have a square root times the same square root, you basically get a squared in the square root, square root, so you just get a. Assuming a is positive. So that's why that worked there. All right, and then secant is 1 over cosine. Again, cosine is left, right, so that's the 1 half. So 1 over 1 half would be 2, right? It would be the reciprocal. And then cosecant x is 1 over sine. And they follow all the same signs. So since sine is negative, cosecant is negative. So 1 over negative root 3, 2, which is a reciprocal. So we get negative 2 over root 3. And we can go ahead and rationalize one more time. That's a good skill for this section. So we get negative 2 root 3. And then root 3 times root 3 becomes 3. So that would be cosecant. So if you've been practicing sine and cosine, you can do all of these. So keep practicing getting familiar with just sine and cosine in that unit circle. Print it out and have it next to you while you're working through this section. Um, you'll get more comfortable with it as you look at it more and more. Um, let's check out the Pythagorean identity. Um, so there's this identity where sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Um, this is a good one to know. Um, It'll help us simplify a lot of things. Um, but one thing we can do is we can find new identities from this. So we have two new identities. So identity one, I'm going to divide by cosine squared. So this is just to derive new identities that we'll use. Um, you don't have to memorize all of them. Just have them for reference and know they exist. Um, this one I probably would memorize because it's so common. But let's check out some of these new identities. So 
divide everything by cosine squared. That's allowed because I'm doing it everywhere. Which leads to sine squared over cosine squared. Cosine over cosine would be 1 equals 1 over cosine squared. And let's use those identities we just learned. So if we go up, sine over cosine is tangent, and 1 over cosine is secant. So we would have tangent squared plus 1 equals secant squared. So this is another useful identity. So box it, star it. I think I have it on the next page as well. Just showing you um, new identities and how they all come from the same place. Um, let's do the same thing and divide by sine squared. So I'm going to divide everything by sine squared this time. And we get sine over sine or sine squared over sine will be 1 plus cosine squared over sine squared, which is cotangent. And then 1 over sine is cosecant, so this would be cosecant squared. So just one more useful identity. And so I just have a nice summary of identities um, that we'll use. So the ones we just proved were the Pythagorean identities is what we call them, because they come from the Pythagorean theorem. Um, and that's because uh, we have si cosine is this way, right? Sine is up and down. And then the unit circle had a radius of 1. So the Pythagorean theorem tells me cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. So that's why it has that name. Remember, cosine is the x value, sine is the y value, and the radius is 1 in that unit circle. So that's where they came up with the name Pythagorean identities. Um, quotient identities are just because they're fractions, right? So that's tangent and cotangent. And then reciprocals. So I added one more. Um, cotangent would be 1 over tangent. Notice they're reciprocals of each other. Um, so we're just going to maybe mess with identities. And then maybe we'll do some graphs in the later videos.